It's the God's truth. Am I making any sense? Yes. Let me say it again. The title of the movie, you didn't get it. The title of the movie is called The Arrival of the Train. So when the train actually came on the screen and was arriving at the train, at the, at the station on the screen, the people in the movie theater thought it was coming through the movie theater and the owl was going to get killed. So the owl jumped up and ran out of the movie theater. That's the way they done us with hell. They scared the hell out. No, let me think. They scared more hell in us than they got out of us. Now, these boys have been educated about hell, so you know what? They don't think the train's going to run through and kill every one of us now. So we, we can't dangle you all over hell anymore and scare you anymore. We, you've been, ed let me say, you've been delivered from the power of darkness. What have I told you? The only hell that you had to experience is what you create in your own life. Now, I know that's controversial, and I'm, I'm, I, that's okay for it to be controversial, but somewhere, somebody's got to educate. I mean, I, I, it makes me mad sometimes. I've been so ignorant about some of the very precious, life-changing things in life. Probably wouldn't done a lot of things I've done. You know what? Here, no more. I'd done a lot of crazy stuff because, you know what? I thought, you know what? If I if if I'm going to end up going to hell, you know what? You ain't going to have no fun over there. And then sometimes heaven wasn't painted to be. Sometimes heaven was made to be like it was church. And I thought, oh God, help me, Jesus. So you know, you, you better have the fun while you can here, because when you get there, it's going to be one big long eternal church service, singing out of certain books. And I thought, you know what? That ain't going to be a whole lot of fun. So let's let's get it on right now while we can. And maybe before the last breath leaves me, I can just say, God, forgive me, and get on over that big old church service over yonder. <laughs> Be bored. And then I thought, you know what? All my friends is going south. Why do I want to go north? You understand what I'm saying? And they were the ones having the fun. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not advocating you going out and doing anything wrong. I, I ain't say, you understand what I'm saying? I was trying to rationalize where I was as far as God was. But I've been delivered from the power of darkness. Now, I'm not saying when you get over you. We've been worried about something like a train arriving. That we've, If they would have stayed, they could have seen the rest of the movie. They didn't see the rest of the movie because they all ran out and wouldn't come back in because they thought the train was in the theater. <laughs> Missed the good things of God. So, <laughs> I've been delivered. Now, look at your neighbor and say, we've got to be delivered from ignorance. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you are fearful of Satan? Y'all never did watch Saturday Night Live back in <laughs> the church lady. It's the church lady. Oh, Satan. Oh, the devil made you do it. Satan. So, do, now, this be, again, be honest. We don't, <laughs> Narelle, do you spend a lot of time worrying about the devil? Yeah. Do you worry about the devil a lot? Do you guys back there worry about the devil a lot? Yeah. Do you spend all day going around binding and taking authority over him? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just telling you. I've done a lot of that. Yeah. You know, I, I figured there was days the devil would say, why don't y'all leave me alone? Just <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. It's just you worry yourself out fighting the devil. I remember one time I went to a church service. I'm not knocking churches, but it was just, I mean, <laughs> we, they was, I said, God's truth. 300 people. It was like a karate exercise match. And I said, what do, I said, what do we, it's, it's spiritual warfare. I thought, what are we, what, what are we chopping? <laughs> they stuff in the room and we're fighting. I thought, and here's what I looked at. This is the church. And they stuff in the room. Maybe it's, maybe it's safer outside than it is in here. You understand what I'm saying? But see, we all go through those growing processes. But see, what God's doing with you all, man, it's, he's doing a quick work, cutting it short in righteousness. And I'm so happy you don't have to live with a bunch of stuff that I, that Josh, hey, Josh just come in late. Josh, do you spend a lot of time worrying about the devil? <laughs> yeah. And then this is, Marsha, she, she watches this cricket. She, she won't mind me saying this. She was told as a young child that the devil lived under her bed. Mm -hmm. And if she didn't do right, he would come out from under the bed and get her. Yeah. Sharon can relate to this. We slept in the bedroom 
Well, they slept in the back bedroom. We slept in the bedroom up here where the stove was in the living room. And that stove had a grate. And then <laughs> you, you, you'd never raised around a coal stove. You know what I'm talking about? Well, Mama would leave the door open, and sometimes the grate would cast a shadow, not a shadow, but a, yeah, it was a shadow, a fiery shadow up on the wall. And I'd wake up at night thinking, oh, Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But we've been delivered from the power of darkness. So, listen, the train ain't going to run through here right now and run over every one of us. No. See, we've got a different group of people on the planet. So, you know, they, they, they're I'm just be honest. They're not worried about hell. They're not worried about the devil. And I'm glad. I'm, we, we, we've, been, we've been taught this wrong. God is a God of love. Now, give me my next scripture. I, I don't know if I made any sense of that or not. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get to where I need to go here. Um, Acts chapter 12, if y'all know the scripture, Peter just got delivered. <coughs> Excuse me, can you give me verse number 1 and 2? Let me drop back down to this right here. Peter just got put in prison. James just got his head cut, cut off. And uh, I, I, want, I want you to see this deal right here. Now, about that time, Herod, everybody say Herod. Herod, he is actually the head over Israel, uh, I guess you could put it that way. It's interesting how they said this set up. Herod was somewhat the king. Then you had a high priest named Caiaphas, and during this time they had actually two high priests, and you got a real big mess, so no, no wonder they got such a gong going on here. Now, about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand. Now, this is supposed to be a religious guy, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, just certain parts of the church, which means, there, go back to that verse again. Let me read it again. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. See, Herod thought he was on the top of the food chain as far, let me say, church was concerned or, or the religious things of God is. It's wrong for any of us to think that we are God's little elect and that God only thinks we are the cakewalk right there. Uh, there, there there's no such thing as God having a favorite group of people. They just ain't. God loves everybody. And here's going to shock you. God loves them people out there just as much as he loves the people in here. And sometimes those people out there will work better with him than the people in here. So watch what this guy did. When you get the mentality that you are better, watch this, than if you're a Christian, you get the mentality that you're better than some other group of people that call themselves of God, what you will do, you will stretch forth your hands or your words to vex them. Don't do that. I've done that. Don't do it. Watch the next verse. What ends up happening to this, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. You can take the S off that and put the S at the end of that, and you could say, and he killed James, the brother of John, with words. Words. Words are powerful. When you, when you release words out of your mouth, you are releasing stuff out that you can't get back. Whether they be life or death, you, you've got to watch what you say. And I don't care if a church don't believe what you believe or do believe what you don't. Vex people. I mean... It's, I know we're having to retrain the way we talk, but you just, just because somebody said it about you, don't say it about them. When people hate, don't retaliate. Man, I read this quote about Nelson Mandela. I think I said this the other night. He, when he was walking out of prison, been there, put there unjustly for so many years, he said, I knew when I was walking down the corridor of that prison to step out on the street for my freedom, if I didn't leave my hate and bitterness behind, I'd still be locked up. That's incredible to me. So watch what here. A man, a man lost his head. Give me now verse number 11, I believe it is. And when Peter was come to himself, see, that's what's happening to me, and I believe you. We could say he awoke. Actually, he was awoke. We're awakening to some things. He said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me. Watch this right here. Delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Watch this. What he's actually saying, I have been delivered from a religious system. Thank God. I've been delivered from a religion. Because that religious system was going to kill him. Now watch this. And from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. I've not only been delivered from a religious system, but I've been delivered from an expectation of religious thoughts from other people. Sometimes people's expectation of you will be a bigger bondage than any drug or alcohol that you could ever take. Because what you'll do, you'll become a people pleaser and not a God pleaser. And so you don't got to do anything anyway to please God. God's already pleased with you. But when you got to be the puppet on somebody's string, 
it actually becomes witchcraft and manipulation. And it'll cause you to live in an arena called darkness. Now, I don't want to upset nobody. Don't want to make nobody mad, but I just ain't named nobody else's music. I'm not, going to be, I'm not going to be a rebel and just be controversial to everybody, but I'm just not going to let people control me. I mean, I want to work with them. I want to be, I want, I want to be all things to all men, be peaceful with all men as much as I can. But you know what? As far as living under somebody else's control, I'm not going to do it. Just ain't going to do it. And at the same time, everybody say at the same time, I'm not going to do it to anybody else. That's the hard part, especially if you're a parent. Now, there, there, are, there are certain things that we've got to do as far as raising our kids, but we can't, we can't just keep people on a string and judge them by the way we were judged or the way we acted. You know, sometimes the way we do our kids is, is, is that we... We try to raise them to keep them from doing what we used to do. We're different people. We just are. Sorry. And in, in, you know, actually, in today's society, they, they really probably don't need to know and probably don't care to know what you used to be back some time ago. They're just, kids are smarter now. Everybody say they're smarter. I don't know if I'm making any sense. No, I'm trying to get somewhere right here. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want here. I don't want to ever get in this position again. If you don't give, we ain't gonna make it. I, I don't want you to never feel. We need you to give, but you know what? I don't. Want, and I've done this. I don't want to make you ever feel condemned because you don't give. You know what? That's between you and God. And if I've got to condemn you to make you give, it ain't gonna do you no good, me no good. See, if God don't keep this thing going, we don't need to be doing it anyway. That's why I used to say for 27 years, summers are bad. People go on vacation, take their money with them. And really what I was trying to say is, give you money. I mean, you get on vacation, just believe God for what you've got to have good money for. You ain't want to work with me now. I thought I'd get a little better response. That's right. <laughs> Give me the next scripture. This is probably my last scripture right here. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Anyway, this is Jesus talking here. And um, <laughs> beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly, they are raven wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns? or figs or thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into hell. Is that what? I read that right. Cast into what? Well, how do we interpret that now? We, we interpret that as hell. But our God is a what? If people don't produce, just cast them into God. But why do we put hell in here? I, you know, I, I, next verse. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Now, watch this. It gets interesting. Not everyone see, oh, Lord, buddy, here, this scripture right here is what we've done. We've had goats over here and sheep over here. We had people going to heaven over here and people going to hell over here. And this ain't a heaven or hell issue right here. I'm, I'm going to show you something. It's not, a heaven or hell. it's not a heaven or hell issue. Man, I've been in church services where right here, man, they, they scorched you. They burnt your butt right here. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. And I can remember praying for people and, and, and even saying, Lord, Lord, remember. And remember what I was talking about this scripture. I just said, Lord, Lord. There's a good possibility I ain't going to heaven. 
shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? Oh, Lord, this verse right here scares me. And then will I profess, this is Jesus talking unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Man, I used to read that and think, man, I, I think I might have cast out half a devil maybe in 30-some years. But you know what? I, I've prophesied a few times. And I've said, Lord, Lord, a few times. Could he be saying to Justin, I don't know you. Could I get on the other side of the last heartbeat and God say, you know what? You did a lot of wonderful works, but you know what? I never knew you. I mean, up in just to maybe eight or nine months, that worked in my system. And if it worked in my system, it's a good possibility it worked in your system because you think, man, God is such a hard God that when you get on the other side, he could just say, you know what? I never knew you. But the word new here, if you, if you broaden it out and look at it, it means approved. I never approved. What do you mean? I never approved of you trying to get righteous through your works. That's what he's saying. You're approaching me based on casting out devils. Your approach to me was this based on, oh my, your Lord, Lord, and all your works you've done. I don't approve of that. You're not based on what's righteous on what you did. You're righteous on what I did. But here's the real crux. Here's the real crux. Jesus knew if they were judging their own self on their own works, listen to this, they would also judge other people on their own works. That's why he said false prophets. Well, they didn't go to church. Look what they done. Look how they act. So if you judge yourself that way, you're going to judge other people that way. That's why Jesus is saying, I don't approve of this system. He really, really what he's saying is, I don't know this system. Is this making any sense? I don't know his system. It's not based on what you do or you do. It's based on what I did. And this is before the cross. And you know what? It seems like it's even got worse after the cross. I don't judge Norell because he did something right or wrong. I mean, from the church I come from, brother, first of all, you could not have wore a shirt like that. <laughs> Let alone all those tattoos. Well, there's one on there with praying hands, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I'd also begin to wonder if you've got piercings places that I can't see. So I would, I'm telling you, I would just be judging. The, I'd be judging you bad, brother. And then I'd look at your haircut and think, well, what kind of haircut is that? Am I, am I, you know? But now I would think, see, I would think, I look, well, no, no, I, wouldn't, I mean, first of all, back then I wouldn't have wore a shirt like this and I wouldn't have been dressed like this. But I would have thought, you know what, I'm dressed better than you, got better shoes. Got, I mean, I look a little better than you. So God's going, just like he was saying, God's going to think more of me because I look better outwardly than you do. God never looked on the outward appearance of anybody. And I'm glad. Because some of you look better than me. And then, you know what? I look better than some of you all. I, that didn't sound right right there. I'm just trying to say, I'm just trying to say, if we're going on, I'm just saying, if we're going on an outward appearance thing right here, we're all in trouble. And what he's saying is, I don't approve of that system. I never knew that system. That's not who I am. My father is a father of love. See, ye that work iniquity. See, that's not right to, to judge people that way. It's not right to judge people think they're righteous, holy, faithful on how much money they give or how much money they don't give. Most ministry live in bubbles. I'm not knocking ministry. I'm just telling you I've been there. I can say that. I've lived 23 years full-time ministry. It's a bubble. When I got outside the bubble, I thought, you know, were you, were you, I'm, this is going to be so bad. i got to say it. Where you all live and where ministry lives is two different worlds. My world was. 
I didn't understand what it was to work all day long on Wednesday, be war slap out, then try to gather kids up and get them to church and feed them and then get them back in time to school and get homework done. I'd be mad at teachers for giving homework on Wednesdays. I'm telling you, that's where most ministry now. Most most ministry lives in a bubble. And then get your paycheck, pay your bills, and then then have somebody look at you and say, "Give God His part now." D- don't get me wrong; that's all important. But what I'm saying is, you you you, you put people under a uh, law, not understanding where they are. And your perspective is warped. It's warped. I don't say this from a bitter standpoint. I don't say this from a mean standpoint. I, I, just, I just say this from this standpoint. I think all full-time ministry ought to go work at least two months. Now, I'm not, please, here, I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just telling you, man, what that would do would call you to identify with people that work eight to five every single day and then on Wednesday night you might have a little bit more compassion because while you've been sitting let me say while I've been sitting in the office studying all day long praying and seeking God and enjoying his presence they've been out in the system been beat up chopped up kicked around wore out and then when they come to church and don't lift their hands in the right way and worship God in the right way (laughs) they're not into God am I I, is this too hard Tammy am I I too hard if I See, here's what I like about Jesus. He came and he identified with the guy that walked down the street every single day. He identified with him. He was the Word made flesh and did not dwell in the palace. He was the Word made flesh and dwelt among the people. He walked through the city streets of Jerusalem, ate fruit in the marketplaces with a common, everyday guy. Walked the shores of Galilee, got in fishermen's boats. Do you ever read anywhere in the scripture where any high priest ever got in a boat other than Jesus? Am I boring y'all? No. He was the dude, man. He, he hung out with what we would call the world. They cussed, drank, smoked, didn't come home at all and tell a scoop or something. I'm not saying he was an advocate of that. I'm just saying he wasn't afraid of that kind of individual. He related to them. And he never judged them on what they did or didn't do. Never did. All he did was he just loved them. There was this girl that used to be on 4th Street when I was there. Her name was Angie. And all she would say was, it's all about love, all about love. All about. She used to make me so mad. God is love. God is love. Just love them. God is. And at that time, the group of people that we had. And I, I'm listen. I'm not. I'm not knocking. I'm just saying, <laughs> Margie, Lori, they were. And I'd say, no, God just needs to kick the slack out of riches. That's what I meant. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. That she would say, nope, that ain't the way. And when I found out, she was right. I was wrong. You just love people. And if love don't work, then God's a liar. But love never fails. Now, there's some people you can love that they're not going to receive it. And some, you've got to love them from a distance. But still, love is love. Everybody say, love is love. Now, I don't know if I made any sense or not. We're being delivered, we're being delivered from the powers of darkness. And darkness is ignorance. And sometimes you, you just, you just got to realize some stuff that they told us wasn't right. Anyway, give my life scripture, and I'll quit right here with my life scripture. And we, and we have known and believed, watch this, the love that God hath passed hence to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, watch this, in the day of judgment. Now, let me stop right there and talk about judgment. It, he just talked about love. If there is a future judgment, see, I believe judgment was behind us, but if there is a future judgment 
and you do got to stand before God, it ain't going to be a God that's mad. It's going to be a God of love. And if you are wrong, guess what? If you are wrong in what? Let me say it this way. If you never profess Jesus here on this earth and you stand over on the other side, how can you turn him down and look love in the face and turn him down? Probably the only reason some people never profess Jesus here is because they never looked love in the face to begin first with him. You cannot turn the real ultimate love of God down. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, watch this, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear, watch this, hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he loved, what's the last word? Who does us include? Now, when you say everybody, now, so you got to, when you say everybody, who's everybody? Now, that was wrote 2,000 years ago. Now, uh, who's us? Who's all of us? Okay, now, when we say all of mankind, everybody agree it's all of mankind? Anybody remember World War II? Who was the, who was the bad guy in World War II? Surely, a man that... Sent over three, was it three million or six million to the gas chamber. Women, kids, surely God's chosen people. Surely God knew He was going to do that before we ever got there. Are you, are you, are you sure God loved Him? Are you sure? Maybe this is not right. Maybe this ain't right. That we just talked about in Matthew we just talked about you can't judge people based on what they do what about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer hello you know who he is what about uh, mothers that take their kids and drive them into the ocean and drown them. Now, well, come on. I want to know. What about uh, people that uh, it's even hard for me to say that uh, sexually abuse little Zoe's now it's going to get quiet. Little Allison Grace. Huh? Are you sure? I ain't getting no help now. Are you sure? Well, okay. Is his love going to fail them? I will. Say, we won't talk about love as long as it's goo goo ga ga. Our four no more. But you want to know the real reality? In the, see, in the real reality of it is you lying about your checkbook. If you want to weigh this out, you lying about a checkbook or, or just some little simple something. Oh, that's too deep. You lying about your taxes. <laughs> now, if you want, if you want to weigh it out, if you want to see what sin is sin, Amen. it's all the same. I don't believe that. Seriously, what what any of us did wrong was never right, but the love of God in the end swallowed it all up. See, this ain't a shame, swing from the chandelier. What about the people you don't like? See, we've got this mentality if, if certain people I don't like, God's on my side and against them. 
Why, you buddy, you better take you another drink of tea. Are you okay? Here's what, here's what, I read this one time, and I'm quitting right here. In the northern sea one time, they was drilling for, they was drilling for oil, and they hit this huge, huge vein of oil. And they spent billions and billions of dollars getting this oil rig set up. And you ever seen it on National Geographic how they build these things offshore, and then they'll float them out there? Billions and billions of dollars, and they didn't get it set up. And they got it set up and was getting ready to drill and it started drilling or started drilling and getting ready to pump oil and they began to feel something wasn't right about this thing and they brought in all these special people and all these special people said you know you better evacuate this thing because this thing's going to go down just a matter of no time and they got all these people evacuated out this billion and billion and billion, deep billion dollar operation and when they got it evacuated they backed off and watched it and all of a sudden <laughs> the ocean just opened up and <laughs> sucked it all down every bit of it was gone in a matter of minutes See, that's what Jesus, the love of Jesus did. It was an ocean of love. And sin was just a little old prop up out there. And love, watch this, just sucked it all up. All the big, little, small love sucked it all up. And I'm not saying what people do, little or big, is right. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying if we ever get the real love of God on the planet, there'll be no mass murderers. There'll, there'll be no warped people because most of those people are doing something out of a herd or something happened in their past that the love of God never conquered. And that's where we fail. Stand up right there. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't I, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sean was saying God don't judge on the fears of man yeah. Yeah. planning on teaching today but this morning as we were sitting and drinking coffee um, I had out the scripture and one kept coming to me and it was in Psalm 139 and actually the part that kept coming to me was search me O God and know my heart and as I looked up that scripture and I started reading all of Psalm 139 this other part is what really grabbed me this morning and it says um, if I ascend into heaven thou art there if I make my bed in hell behold thou art there but then when you go on down to verse 11, it says, If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, even the light shall be the light above, even the night shall be the light above me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. And here's the part that grabbed me. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. See, to God, the darkness and the night, they're both alike because he's already taken care of both. It's like the tree of the knowledge of good and the evil. Either one can lead you away, but he's already taken care of both. Can you say amen? And you know, to love some people, you've got to have the help of the Holy Ghost. That's just, a, that's just a witness he wants you to eat. That's what he wants. We talk about heaven on earth, but there'll not be heaven on earth until everybody learns how to love it.
opportunity to love this week, so that is what we will do. God's not intimidated by people. He loves them. I heard Tammy say this, the walls have got to come down sometime. Can't stay that way. There's no walls in the kingdom. So, go have a blessed day. You're blessed. Highly favored if you need prayer or anything.